So here, if E is picking an ace, if the event E is picking an ace, then its event respective event E bar or E, e complement is not picking an ace in case of this situational problem of playing cards. So E is picking an ace or an event E bar is not picking an ace then in this case these two are complementary events that implies E and E bar are complementary events and because they are complementary events I have P of E plus P of E bar is equal to 1 is what we have seen as the mathematical definition. But probability of picking an ace is 1 over 13 plus P of E bar is equal to 1. Therefore, P of E bar can easily be found by taking to the other side where P of E bar is 1 minus 1 over 13 which on simplification through LCM gives me the answer as 12 over 13. Therefore, I conclude that for the second bit, the probability of not getting an ace when the card is picked from the playing cards of not getting an ace is 12 over 13 is what I get as the answer. So this is how we do many situational problems of daily life connected with probability where we find the chance of happening and not happening. In this case, chance of getting an ace and not getting an ace through the exclusive formulae as discussed in the topic of probability. Now we are seeing the playing cards in the previous problem which pauses us in some of them not knowing on what exactly are the playing cards and its rules and its contents. So to understand the problems, some of the problems which are expected in examination on the playing cards, we need to understand the rules of the playing cards, which is very important to understand the rules and then we can understand the actual problem asked on probability connecting the playing cards. So let's see exactly randomly on how many contents we have on each of the playing cards. So totally there are 52 cards in the game of playing cards and this 52 cards are divided into 13, 13, 13, and 13. So each of the 13 have one of them being black diamonds, black spades. And next is red hearts. And next is red diamonds and the next is black clubs so you have four different types of cards named one is black spades which are 13 in number out of 52 and red hearts which are 13 in number out of 52 and red diamonds which are 13 in number out of the 52 cards on the whole and finally there are 13 black clubs in 52 cards usually the black spades are denoted are given with the symbol like this. This is how we have the black spades. And then I have red hearts which is red in color and this is black in color. And the red diamond which is again red in color and this is black and clubs. This is how the symbol of the black club is. These two are red in color and these two are black in color. Out of this, the 13 cards, each of the 13 cards are numbered from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 10. And then we have ace, king, queen and jack. Similarly, I have the numbers 2, 3 till 10 and ace, king, queen, jack for each of the different black clubs. 
So this is how we have four different types of cards with each of them number from 2 to 3, 2 to 10 and ace, king, queen and jack and then each of the red hearts and red diamonds and red clubs having the similar number and count with their own symbols as put on the cards is how we have the total playing cards with each of its contents as given out here. So let's see a problem connecting the multiple events that is here I don't take one experiment but I take more than two coins or two dice or two playing cards and do together at once to start support with this example problem when what is the probability of getting the sum as seven when two dice are rolled at once that is I have two dice the dice one and the dice two which are rolled at once now for this Now as I see here that my top surface is here is 1 and here it is 6 that is 1 plus 6 is 7 is how we find the different possibilities. But before this I need to know the sample space which is to be identified for this. The sample space for this kind of problem is that for each one on the top surface there are 6 possibilities here that is for every one on the first dice there is either 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, 1 4. 1, 5 and 1, 6. Similarly, when I have 2 on the top surface, for each 2, I have 6 possibilities here such that I get 2, 1, 2, 2, so on and so forth till 2, 6. Similarly, for each 3 on the top, I have 6 possibilities for the second dice such that I get 3, 1, 3, 2, so on and so forth till 3, 6 and each of 4 on the top gives 4, 1, 4, 2, so on and so forth, 4, 6, and each of 5 has 5, 6, and each of 6 on the first dice has 6 possibilities, 6, 2, till 6, 6. Therefore, this is my sample space for each of 1, each of 2, each of 3, each of 4, each of 5, and each of 6 has six different possibilities that is for six different possibilities there are six each individual possibilities therefore my n of s is six times of six which is 36 therefore total number of outcomes when two dice are rolled is 36 similarly my number of events favorable to event e also needs to be found here the event which I need to identify initially out here is that the event in case of this problem is getting a sum of 7. Getting a sum of 7 is the event identified in this problem. So getting of a sum of 7 is what we need to find for this. So let's see what are the different possibilities of getting a sum. Initially when I have 1 on dice 1 I have 6 on dice 2 is how we get the sum as 7. Similarly, for 2, I have 5 on the second dice which gives sum 7. For 3 on the first die, I have 4 on the second dice which gives me the sum as 7. Therefore, 4 on here gives me 3 and 5 on here gives me 2 and 6 here gives me 1. So totally there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 possibilities through which I can get the number of outcomes favorable to getting a sum of 7 that is event E is 6. Therefore my N of E is 6 and N of S is 36 that implies probability of getting a sum of 7 is N of E by N of S using the formula I get 6 over 36 that is 6 1, 6, 6, 1 over 6 is the answer is how 
we get for multiple events, in this case of an example problem, two dice are rolled at once, is how we identify the given problem through the sample space and the events possibility of getting a sum of seven connected to multiple events. So now that we have completed the topic of probability, now comes the limitations which we are going to discuss in its own probability. So probability has its own limitations. Initially to start with, we have seen that for an event E, the limitations of the probability are that P of E always lies between 0 and 1. So we have already identified this using the mathematical definitions. And also we have seen that sum of all elementary events is 1 or sum of all probabilities is equal to 1. But if imagine I take say I have different balls in this bag where one of that is big and the small balls are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there are one big ball and 15 small balls. Then if I apply my probability to these kind of problems, then I think I have to search for my own limitations in defining the probability because in case of this bag containing one big ball and 15 small balls, if I say what is the probability of picking the red ball from a bag containing one big huge ball and very tiny small small balls, then it is easy to remove the big ball randomly taken out of the bag. So we cannot expect any probability or a chance here because the event is said to be certain in case of this exclusive example problem. So this kind of an example problem makes us understand on rethinking on how we limit the defining of a probability. So in this case, it is a certain event. We see that probability of picking a big ball is certain but this is an upset to the definition of probability because any by ns doesn't give this to be correct answer so in general if i take picking up a big ball is certain but this has its own limitation so let's see what is the limitation probability cannot be applied to this kind of a problem because probability cannot be applied if each of the events are not equally likely to happen is one of the biggest question in probability and its limitations because when I define probability I need to identify that each of the event has to be equally likely to happen. In this case, it fails because happening of each of the small balls, picking up all the small balls in the bag is equally likely with each of the individual small ball. But when compared with the big ball is not equally likely to happen in comparison to the smaller balls. Therefore, for probability to be applied, I need each of the balls or to be picked where each of them should be of same size which is called equally likely to happen and equally likely not to happen is how we understand the limitations of probability connected with mathematics. So usually in many of the problems we have identified the word random selection that is a ball is picked randomly. So what do you mean by the word random in mathematics or in probability? This plays a very important role in random selection because for any probability to happen in its trueness, we need to randomly select. Say for example, I have a bag containing full of balls. I randomly picked one of the ball, but I don't have any other rules or the smartness or the cheating which I apply in picking up a ball. So random selection plays a vital role 
and probability or calculation of probability. So whether I pick a card or whether I toss a coin or whether I pick a ball from the back or pick a card from the playing cards, I randomly select the card from the playing cards or I randomly pick the ball from the back containing different balls. So random selection is very important in restricting to understanding of probability through limitations. The word random selection is applied in every problem. This is how we understand random selection. So the next limitation we are going to see in probability is about biased and unbiased coins. Very frequently we see in many of the problems where it says an unbiased dice or an unbiased coin etc. So what is unbiased or what is biased? How do we differentiate and why is it that that is so important to refer in the problem that an unbiased coin is, to is tossed for expecting the probability? So what is the reason is what is the biggest limitation in probability? So let's see how we differentiate between biased and unbiased and its importance in the existence of probability. So to start with, let me differentiate between unbiased and biased, say, referring to the coin or a dice or any other object which is taken in the event E of the probability. So when I take the unbiased and biased coin, say for example, this is referred to be equal chances of landing on each face. So an unbiased coin or an unbiased dice is referred as that coin or a dice in which each of the face has equal chances of landing. For example, I take a coin and I would like to toss, then my heads should have equal chances of landing and my tails should have equal chances of landing on either side of heads and tails. So let me take this example of an unbiased coin with a coin out here. Now with this coin, when I toss, I may get a head or a tail is based totally on how realistic I am in using this coin. When I say unbiased coin, I see that my equal chances of landing either on heads or on and tails is equally with same chances. But mathematicians or sometimes critics always say that some coins are unfair when used in tossing of a coin or expecting probability through that. So that unfair chances are called biased coins. So in probability, we always take equal or fair chances of landing on each side, that is unbiased coins or unbiased dice, etc. So therefore, in this case, this is set unequal chances of landing. Therefore, this is called unfair coin, where one side might be bulged or raised or the other side might be flat. This is how we differentiate between biased coins and unbiased coins. So in probability, it is very important to decide on whether a chosen coin or a chosen dice is biased or unbiased. If biased, we don't take this into consideration. If this is unbiased coin, we take that into consideration. Say this is an unbiased coin. An unbiased coin is this.